got a great result and we were able to get a lot of the money back. At the end of the case, they bought me an Omega Speedmaster watch. I'm Eric Morrell, I'm a criminal defense attorney. I always tell people I'm a fighter, not a handshaker. And today I'm gonna really get into a case uh, where I had a phenomenal result. I was able to get some um, assets back for a client of mine. I was able to fight um, the DEA and um, get some money back. So let's call my client Bill. So Bill is driving and he's in an area where supposedly there was some like fentanyl being produced. That's what the DEA said. And they follow him to his home and then they follow him to New York. So they use that to stop him. And they stop him in Hudson County. When they stop him, they go over to his vehicle and they try to make an argument, this is the DEA, that, that he had something that they saw, a package similar to what they saw in New York and similar what they saw him coming out of his home. Now, I did some research and we did some work. We actually subpoenaed the video right outside his place where he was pulled over and I, I got it and we watched it and it's not exactly what the DEA says it was. Now, the case started because a New York lawyer called me and I was actually on spring break. I was with my children and with my wife and I got this phone call and it basically, they were saying they had a New York lawyer or sorry, another lawyer that they were not happy with and the case was out of Essex County. So I had to figure out, okay, why is a judge in Hudson County getting the search warrant? Why is the search warrant through Hudson County? So I'm on the phone with the family and I, I realized that what happened was they got a warrant in, in Hudson and Hudson County must have decided they didn't want to take the case. So it was like a multi-county case. So what happens is after Hudson County says, we don't want to take the case, they call Essex. They did find um, marijuana about 10 pounds in his trunk. So then Essex says, oh, like, let's see what's in his house. So they get a warrant for his house. So they go back to the house and they find a lot more marijuana. They find a gun and they find a lot of cash. Now, the interesting thing about this case is once they find the gun, it's a problem because now it's a much more serious case. Okay, so they find a gun, they find uh, about 65 pounds of marijuana and they find a decent amount of cash. So I'm in, in South Florida on the phone and I figure out, okay, so now I'm dealing with Essex County. So in my mind, I know that I could rely on my staff and they could file what's called like an opposition to detention motion, where I'm gonna tell the judge all the good things about the person. So when I get in front of a judge in Essex, I'm gonna be able to have him released. And I get back home from Florida and I figure out how we should file an opposition to detention, which I file. And then we go up to the judge and the judge says, look, Eric, you know, I listened to your arguments. I'm going to release him. That's really when the fun starts, because now I know, all right, I have to make arguments why this was a bad search and why I should try to get the best result I can for this person. So what the next step is, of course, you realize I mentioned it earlier, is I got that video. So that video helped. That's good lawyering. When you lawyer and you're able to get a, a video that's separate and you're able to show things that are defensible, that was very helpful. But there was another situation in this case. The DA had took a lot of money. They seized money. And I, I, I sent an article around about this money seizure. And this was something that I knew was key. So not only did I you know, know that I had to fight the case, but there was a second component. And now we have to deal with trying to get some of his money back. A few months into the case, I, I file a petition for, it's called a petition for mitigation or remission form. I'm basically answering the DEA and telling them I have a lot of reasons why this money is legal money. I mean, it's not from ill-gotten gains. And I had done this years ago before and I didn't get a great result. So I said, you know what? I'm determined to do this better this time. I was about 15 years ago. So I had Naomi who worked for me on last summer, who some of you met. She spent about 15 hours responding to this petition for remission mitigation form. And I have it right here. And of course I sent his IRS uh, tax return statement and we explained a lot of different things and we, we filed a formal answer and we also filed a brief. If the DA seizes money or if money is seized and if it's over a certain amount, there has to be like a separate filing that the DA needs to do and it's supposed to be in federal court. So I put that in the answer saying you guys didn't do the separate filing. So they said, you know what, after they read my um, package, they agreed with me and they referred all the money back to Essex County. 
So then I knew that I could negotiate with Essex County and I was able to negotiate a large amount of the money back. So the criminal case ended up resolving. We um, pled to what's called a fourth degree marijuana charge, which is it's just over six ounces of marijuana, which was actually a great result, just the possession. And then on the gun case, the part of, with the gun, we were able to get a result where we just pled to just not having his firearms ID card, which is a very innocuous charge, and I was very happy with the result. But the big thing about it was my client was released from jail, he got a great result for the case, and we were able to get a lot of the money back. And at the end of the case, Bill was super you know, sincere with me, and he bought me an Omega Speedmaster watch as a gift for doing such a great job, and he knew I was into watches, and that's very rare. I've been doing this for a long time, you know, since 1998, and it was, a, it was great. And of course, I was also able to get him back a large amount of money that he used to take care of his family. And he's, you know, looking now for a, a job. And I also used the proceeds. I was able to buy my son a truck with the money that I received back. And also the county received a decent amount of money. So Essex County got a, a large amount of money. So, you know, the, everyone, you know, did well, um, and my client got a great result. He was deserving, he had no prior criminal history. I was very happy, and on the phone, I said to him, I remember when the phone call came in from his fiance, I said, you know, I'm gonna take care of it, I'm gonna do all the things I can to get a great result, and I said, hakuna matata, I said, no worries. And once I said that, they said, you know what, Eric, we're gonna go on, get on board with you, and it all worked out. You know, that's the difference between me and other lawyers. I, I take care of all the loose ends. I do the best I can for people. Um, it was a multi-county case. Uh, we were involved with three different judges on the case. And, um, you know, that's the way I do things. Eric Morrell, criminal defense attorney, fighter, not a handshaker, and Hakuna Matata, no worries.